Saying Hi-Fi Rush is good is an understatement. I don't think there's anyone that's said differently, matter of fact. Uh, it came out no of nowhere to near universal praise and kind of blew a lot of people away because it was a fun, colorful game in a sea of, well, I don't think it's a stretch to say that it's my favorite game I've played so far this year, and I've played it a lot already. Director John Johannes, uh, fingers crossed that's right, of Evil Within 2 fame, mentioned that this was a dream game of his, and I feel like a lot of that love is felt in the lighthearted story, character design, and premise. I mean, look at it. The game is absolutely dripping with style. You play as Chai. Chai is a lazy dude who dreams of being a rock star. He's goofy, a little dumb, and full of that go get him attitude that every Golden Retriever boy is made of. The game begins with him receiving an open heart transplant with a Zune accidentally thrown in the mix, and it promptly tosses him and us into the action. Now Chai is a defect, and he has to fight his way out of the Vandalay Robotics Complex in order to survive. Along the way, Chai makes friends with uh, 808, his cat, uh, Peppermint, pretty cool, got a robot leg, Macaron, he's got robot arms, uh, Cinnamon, he's entirely a robot, and Korska, she's not a robot at all. Uh, they're all more concerned with the nefarious Spectra program Vandalay is plotting to release in order to mind control humanity. Now through the lens of Chai, not a lot of this makes sense and I think that's for the best. The story isn't necessarily the most compelling, it hits all of the emotional beats of a ragtag misfit group who manage, through the power of friendship, to beat the big bad. That's it. Um, what I think makes the story fun is that Chai doesn't get it. He's a little dumb idiot boy who just gets tugged along by his smarter, less prone to acts of self-destruction friends. Even the villains join in on these irreverent moments of stupidity. They understand he's dumb and dunk on him, as a villain should, but they still can't stop him from falling upward. This way of pushing the story off in favor of letting us have these fun moments makes everything seem less serious and, in turn, makes it a bit harder to be critical of the story presented. Nobody is taking it seriously that there's mind control at stake, and when somebody does, Chai is there to not understand the situation, even when the player does. This is all undercut by a pretty banger soundtrack that helps tie the best moments back to how cool and epic these misfits really are. Um, that's another thing, by the way. The soundtrack for this game is full of licensed songs, and all of those licensed songs are pretty good. I think my favorite would have to be either Invaders Must Die by The Prodigy or One Million by Nine Inch Nails. Um, however, one cool thing about Hi-Fi Rush is if you don't like or want to listen to licensed songs for whatever reason, then the developers left you a pretty cool option to swap those tracks out with in-house composed songs that are also a pretty chill listen. I kind of want to leave it at yeah, this is pretty good, but I think I would have liked it a bit more if the licensed songs were chosen for seemingly more reason than the gag and that they're quarter note. For example, Invaders Must Die plays when Chai and crew are breaking into the Roqueford office, and One Million plays when you're fighting against the QA One Million robot. But imagine if the song's meaning had also been catered to. I, I get that I'm getting a little picky. Like, the whole point of the game is to be lighthearted, and catering to the depressing meaning behind One Million would have 100% been counterintuitive. I'm just kind of letting my imagination run wild with it. The truth is, everything sounds good and is obviously placed with care within the game. Um, so let's just leave it at that before we start to sound like music snobs. Moving on, the platforming just, it ain't it, man. I've kind of intentionally not said anything just yet, uh, but this is a problem I have with a lot of Devil May Cry adjacent games where like the combat is very clearly the highlight of the experience. The mode of progressing to that next highlight is always kind of dull for me. High Fry Rush throws a lot of bells and whistles at you to make things at least seem interesting, like how the stage reacts if you dodge or attack on time, but at the end of the day, it's just a tunnel to the next encounter. 
This wouldn't be so bad if I wasn't currently playing through every mission for a third time on a lower difficulty, trying to find the one collectible I missed from my second playthrough of the game, because the game doesn't tell you where you're missing things. It just tells you that you're missing things. It just makes the whole experience kind of whack. This isn't a direct complaint about the level design per se, but I feel like if you're going to segment... Alright, hold up. I gotta... We gotta do this seriously. I feel like if you're going to segment your graffiti collectibles on a little board in the room with clear indicators of which stage those cool art pieces are in, you should, I don't know, extend that to every other collectible in the game. I Seriously, just one more menu, please. Anyway, what I was saying is once you got the collectibles out of the way, the lack of fun things to do in the levels themselves becomes apparent. It's just a clunky platformer that you're supposed to run through five times to prove you're a real gamer. And make no mistake, combat is where Hi-Fi Rush shines. There is but one simple rule. Do everything to the beat. If you've got rhythm, this is super easy to do. If you don't have rhythm, it's pretty easy to learn. Every track is set to a quarter note beat, so as long as you attack to that beat, you deal increased damage and gain extra style points. So long as you dodge to that beat, you're able to dodge consecutively. That simple rule of follow the beat helps guide and inform every decision you make as Chai. Enemies attack on beat too, which makes it easy to understand when attacks are going to land and at what time you need to dodge or parry them. There are some tougher color-coded enemies who require you to call in one of your allies to clear their defensive buff. Um, that being said, none of the enemies are particularly tough, and this can be either good or bad depending on what level of challenge you're looking for. I felt like more often than not, even on Rhythm Master, I was never in trouble or about to die, which I'm hoping gets fixed in the inevitable DLC. I also hope they give Chai some more options. One thing I think would have been really cool is if we were able to set 808 in like different spots and teleport between your current position and 808 as a sort of cancel for moves. I kept expecting it to happen after Peppermint dropped in was like, hey, guess what? I can teleport to you and back every so often, but it never did. Um, I should add that Chai does feel like a complete character. This is just like a wishlist item for the DLC. Besides the lowish skill ceiling and the lack of complex tools, I honestly think Chai is a really nice jack of all trades. He has a magnet grab for closing the distance on enemies that's only mildly frustrating with larger groups. Um, he has a really nice dodge that goes super far and can be chained together or cancelled with attacks. He also has this really cool thing called a jam combo, which basically just spins a bar of meter to summon in your companions for a lot of extra damage. If you actually kill an enemy with your jam combo, it triggers this extra bit called overkill where the robot can basically be comboed again before they actually die. This is where the bulk of your points mid fight are going to come from and personally they're the most satisfying thing to do in Hi-Fi Rush. Also if you hit a boss with a jam combo it typically ends up giving you a neat little stagger window and can usually let you sneak in extra damage if the jam combo pops them up. Now I will add that later on in the game you can get access to this one move called Habiki and it's kind of absolutely busted for style points like to the point that I think they need to nerf it if or something. It's basically this massive AoE attack that knocks out all the little guys instantly. It pumps your combo counter up a ton and also knocks out shields the enemies may have without having to call in your assists. I feel like the reason it's so busted is that you can basically guarantee yourself an auto S rank in most fights by just farming the bots for batteries in the first wave and then in the second just using Habiki to clear it without having to press anything. Like. Uh, as of writing this section, I've got about 50-ish hours in the game, and I've genuinely tried every combination of abilities that I could find, and nothing is as good for score as Hibiki first and anything else second. Uh, but otherwise, the scoring system is pretty fair, and the combat feels incredible. Now, if you're familiar with Devil May Cry games, there is a form of Bloody Palace, except it's called Rhythm Tower. Now, for context, I've never cleared Bloody Palace. I am not some elite gamer. <laughs> the, the furthest I've ever gotten is like 100 or 20 so floors in uh, Devil May Cry 5. Uh, with that in mind though, Rhythm Tower is currently really easy. It's only 60 floors long and every 10 you get a new boss fight. Before every boss fight you have an opportunity to buy items from a hologram Corsica but it's honestly not necessary. I have a feeling that this very heavily foreshadowed DLC will give us two things that I desperately want. A Chai must die mode and an update to Rhythm Tower that makes it way harder. This is the main reason that I love Devil May Cry games as it's basically just the game with none of the filler platforming sections that I already don't like. 
light. So if they end up giving us that, then I'm a happy camper. But otherwise, I'd recommend clearing it at least twice for all the rewards it has to offer. One thing the Rhythm Tower has that I haven't seen at all in the campaign and I wish was in it is the, um, the gold-plated enemies. These guys all have way more health and way higher stun bars than normal enemies, but otherwise they function the exact same. I'd love to see a difficulty where every enemy is gold-plated and Chai does like half damage or something because these guys are each individually the right amount of fun to beat up on because of how tanky they are. Um, oh, also, I, I can't believe I almost forgot to mention it, but some tougher enemies also have quick time event finishers. These are all set to a beat, so memorizing it becomes easy and the reward for doing it is automatically killing them in a pretty flashy way. I'm still not 100% sure if it's worth skipping the quick time event or not, um, so I typically just don't because it looks cool um, and it requires less time than parrying the obnoxious little stop everything animation twice just to hit the guy again. But yeah, that's Hi-Fi Rush. If you like games similar to Devil May Cry, then congrats. It's 30 bucks and 100% worth every penny for you. If you've never played a Devil May Cry game, but some of this sounds interesting, then go check it out. It's like, it, again, it's just 30 bucks. I can't really recommend against this game at all. I don't know if what I just did would constitute a review or not. I kind of just wanted to tell y'all about a game I've been playing. Um, your boy went through some life changing events really quickly back to back, so I wasn't able to work on anything for a while, but I'd like to change that. My next topic will be a bit more brain bigger fine than whatever this just was so look forward to it if you liked what you heard then subscribe here or follow me on twitter or something otherwise y'all stay safe out there